Good evening and welcome to Goose of Making Stuff, where we are going to make a flamethrower because it's fun. So we're starting here with a simple task of measuring up this pipe and cutting it into the proper length. I actually did them a bit too long and it looks a little bit weird. Even though this is not, you know, in any way accurate to the actual flamethrower, but it still looks like one, so yeah. We gonna live with that, uh, unless you want to look at this in inspiring ways and say, Hey! I'm gonna make it 100% accurate. So, yeah, this lids uh, is for like log ends, so they are very bent in the same way, almost like uh, gas tanks are. So we're gonna use this, and this is actually some kind of solar panel lights things in the bottom there, because they had some in. This is a solar stream on bottom, which you can actually remove the bottom of. And then it will have a very, very good gas tank for it, because they are properly rounded, as they should be, like that, you see. And now we have a good pressure tank for it, because the others are liquids and these are pressured, I think. I don't really know how flame truth works. But anyway, as you see, I have done here a mold, no, as a template here for a cut. They're going to look like this, and then they're going to be put like that, three of them and glued to it, so we have a frame, so they will be distantly apart with a gas tank in the middle. This is some PVC pipes with some PVC pipes bend on them, so you can you see you have a V-shape in the in the back there, at the bottom there, and then you're gonna have it goes up, so you know you can actually stand on itself when you put it down, like that, and also you're just gonna attach the backpack to them. And you see, I'm making two of these, if this isn't obvious by now. So you now see, I'm drilling out the hole there to put a um, PVC connector that is, you know, uh, across. So you can put them in everywhere, because they look kind of like that. So now we also have some bits and pieces here that's going to be put on, so they look like they do on pictures of this particular flamethrower. Like that, and you have some other ends. Like you can actually use proper plumbing parts for this, also, which I have at my sister's house because they needed actual pipe to repair something. So I couldn't use them. So I have these other boxes of scraps we're gonna use. This is, you know, means you attach PVC pipes to two walls so you can use them there. And you see, now it's gonna be put on there. So now we have the uh, pressure tank here. Uh, that we are going to uh, put together with zip ties here. These zip ties are going to be covered up, so it's going to be the final um, thing here. Also, I made a little bit of a pipe in the middle there. You can see this orange, just to have something to attach it to, a little bit more stability. And this is the connector, whatever thing. As you see, my knowledge of flamethrowers are amazingly good. So now we have actually put a little bit of a strip there for the foam over the tank there. Now things start. This is all the garden hose uh, sprayers, which I'm going to cut up and reuse. You see, like that. You see, they do not look 100% authentic in any way, shape or form to something that was made in the World War II. But anyway, this is really based on flamethrowing the thing. So this is a spray can lid. And the other one is a Ritual, uh, the brand is called Ritual, so they sell, you know, nice stuff in your bath and whatever. And we have a ton of these because uh, I have um, family members that like these things. But I think they are very, very useful uh, bottles, so I ask them to keep them to me when they are finished with them. So anyway, so you see you cut up the bottle there. And now we have the sloping part there. Now it's going to be a bunch of pipes being put together, snugly fitted uh, with tape here. So you can actually attach the proper um, shape of the front of the flamethrower, whatever part it is. It surely has some technical names for it. But we're going to glue it together and make it out of plastic, so it's probably going to burn very, very well if this was ever exposed to fire. No! We're cutting the pipe here because it will be used on the side. 
So you see, I'm cutting there, and if someone wonders why is all these pipes orange? Well, because here in Sweden we put up reflective pipes along the road in the winter, so the snowplow knows where the road is, and also you know where the road is, but they are broken, and you can get them for free if you ask nicely the broken ones that has been damaged by the snowplow or whatever, but this is a very good source of plastic pipes for me, that's why they're all orange. So yeah, you see, now I just put the little uh, holes there to be put inside there with a snugly fitted smaller little pipe, and now I have sprayed everything black off screen because I don't want to have paint dust in my camera. So now we're just gonna paint all this green, uh, and you see it's a little bit of an off-colored green, but don't worry, for the next layer we will going to fix that, because you need to do this in more than one layer if you want a really good result. So you see now we have uh, this lovely weird green paint here, and now I have mixed up more brown paint into the same green paint, and you get this more military green uh, thing going on. So. That's why we're going to paint everything again. So let it dry overnight and be sure to not watch it because it's gonna be really, really, really boring. Unless you are into that thing of watching people watching paint dry on streams, which uh, RT Game did is actually really fucking funny. But anyway, now we're gonna put some, uh, some uh, cotton straps here around this for detailing purposes and comfort for your hand. Um, this is actually something they did in the thing, which this was going to be used for, but I did not have time to make them until my the thing themed Halloween party, which the other monsters was made for. If you watched the earlier videos, then recently I have uploaded. So you see, now we're gonna have some metal paint here around all the edges and things, so they will look very nice. Most likely. There's going to be the places where, you know, paint has come off. And now, you see, I'm also going to do that on some detailed part here on the back, not only on the handle, because this has been roughly handled by things, most likely. Because very uh, rarely you get something completely new out of the box and never ever scratch the paint on it, unless you are that kind of person. So you see, there is a spot where I forgot to paint, so let's put some metal paint in it, because that would be, you know, logical, I don't know. But you see, they look very, very, very lovely, and also some touch-up for some little highlights on the paint and stuff like that, and this would be absolutely fantastic. I'm happily the clouds on them. So now, after that, we are going to assemble this to almost is a uh, finished state. So you see, that's why I'm putting the zip tie under that, and now I'm going to zip tie this securely while it is covered by that thing. So now we're gonna put in all the, the hoses here for the actual thrower part. So you see you have there, and we're gonna put it inside of the, the, the business end of the machine which I do off-screen because I'm a pro. Yeah, now. And now we're gonna put some brown little dirt here things. And this is very wet paint, so they will, you know, uh, start to rin down from the top to the bottom. And I'm just gonna let them dry because it, it looks fantastic. And uh, it will be, you know, a logical context that, you know, the, on one of these uh, gas or whatever they used in these things that, you know, start to deteriorate the flamethrowers over time. And now we're gonna make some uh, some dirt here until it is cotton here. So you're just gonna swab very dry paint and you know rub it in so it will look fantastic like that. They are well used flamethrowers. Now you see I'm putting this backpack here. I actually put the entire backpack on here because I wasn't sure that I could dismantle it too much. But you see, this is the part that goes around and there and um, yeah, you see, it's just around the frame and you see this is going under the uh, straps there. So it will actually be very comfortable to put on and it doesn't look very distracting when you have it on. But if you can remove all this, that would be good. But this is a very quick way anyway to just show off that what you can do. 
Also, I don't have a broken backpack without being sacrificed to the creation gods. But you see, now we have this other thing here, which is they. You see, this is one the for cars, but I think they are refueling systems to the flamethrower. So I'm just gonna put them on the side there instead of having this big stiff pipe going around there. As you see, accuracy. Fuck it. If I can say that word so far in this video without getting demonetized. Hopefully I can. By the way, that's finished now. So let's just put some, some uh, s detailed screws here into the foam as our last part of detail. So I hope you find this hardware flamethrower uh, video useful and uh, if you make your own please send me pictures of it uh, it's not that anyone else has uh, you know done this on a YouTube video before but um, there's my take on it so see you in the next one bye